before we get into the main bulk of the presentation, um, I'm always told by marketing to promote the social channel, so always remember to do so, don't want to get told off, but one of the key things to mention with this is that the social channels are great in order to get the latest updates, so whether you're a player that's already signed to us and want to know latest updates on how the coronavirus situation is affecting everything, um, or you want to know when the next trial game is going to be available, that is the best way in order to get the updates on that, so please do follow us on all social channels. Okay, so getting into the first slide, and I'm going to probably keep moving myself around the screen. So why even look at America? So I know for a fact that we've got a number of different student athletes here today. We've got some that are already signed up to America, which is great. And the fact they want to learn more is really helpful. We've got others who are completely new to it. I know we've got some maybe as young as 14, 15 joining us today with their parents, which is great. Back when I went um, over 10 years ago, it was very much unheard of and I kind of learned about it very late in the process. Whereas I think today, a lot of people are aware of America as an opportunity for them. And therefore, they're thinking about it a lot earlier. So first and foremost, why would you even want to go out to America on a sports scholarship? Obviously, with travel restrictions right now, um, not able to fly. But hopefully, by um, kind of the end of the year, that will all be good. But there's over 4,500 colleges and universities in America that offer degrees. Um, and if you're looking specifically at soccer, which obviously there's a couple of soccer players here today, there's over 2,000 universities and colleges that can give scholarships. Now, over 600 unis in America gave over $20,000 scholarship um, on average last year. And I know particularly for the parents that are listening in today, one of the key things for you might be that over 95% of athletes in America on a scholarship pay less for university than if they were to go into the UK. Now, we can go further in into information about the costs because obviously averages can be misleading um, but as you can see from a financial perspective first and foremost it is an unbelievable opportunity. Um, often a question that we get can be with regards to let me just quickly I'm just going to get this up here just so that somebody was waiting um, is that people say well what is a degree worth in America in comparison to if you're listening from the UK or Ireland or in Europe well, you've only got to look at like the top 20 universities in America to see that probably 13, 14 of them are American. A lot of people would think about Harvard, Yale, Stanford, you know, all kind of the flagship Ivy League schools. So in terms of an education, you're arguably getting the best education possible. And as you can imagine, over four and a half thousand universities, that can vary hugely. Um, however, it speaks for itself that, you know, the top universities are among those that are the best in the world. Um, again, if you're interested in sports scholarships, you'll already know how massive college sports are in America. And again, Milo and Megan will be able to give further insight. But for me personally, it wasn't unusual in big games to be playing in front of thousands. Um, and I know like for Megan, for example, D1, they get great coverage. So there might be games on ESPN um, for the top teams. That's pretty regular for that. Um, so, yeah, it's really important. And at every university and college, I think and again if they disagree but the sports teams are pretty much the focal points of the whole university like everyone knows when the teams are playing they're really well supported so it's a real community feel on campus um i'd never been to the states before i live in suffolk in the uk and anyone who's been there will know that that is very different to living in downtown chicago where i ended up playing and studying so it's a great opportunity for me i traveled to over 20 states during those four years what you'll find is during this conversation and seminar is that you are super busy during semester because not only are you playing, but you're studying. And also for some people, it's working as well to help reduce costs further. Um, but there is, you know, great opportunities during the summer or spring break to, you know, easily travel and into travel can be super affordable as well. And then I guess the main thing is just experience the magic of American life. And yes, it's easy to say, you know, live in America, the weather's better, you've got your fraternities and it's a lot like movies on on film well you know it can really be like that and there are times when you will miss home but for me personally there's nothing like it and if you compare that to what university is like back here in UK and what maybe a lot of my friends or colleagues have done um, in the UK it's just complete contrast and then going back to the financial element, lucky for me was that I was able to come out of university completely debt free. I'm pretty sure Megan and Milo are in the same boat with that as well. So from a financial perspective, unbelievable opportunity. Um, but hopefully what you'll get from today's seminar, it's not just about the finances, it's everything that comes with it. So opportunity to travel, be independent at a key point in your life and it, you know, essentially a life changing experience. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get to that throughout here. Now, 
when we talk about college sports and the different divisions, just to confuse you right off the bat, is that there's various different um, divisions out there in America that you could play at. I'm just trying to, sorry, it's all about me, so I have to be on the shot. Um, but yeah, so there's different divisions and some of you will be familiar with these already. So we've got NCAA, NAIA and the NJCAA. What I'll do is I'll just move myself to the top so you can see the table properly. So NCAA and NAIA are four year schools. So you would go there, do your four year or five year in some cases, get your degree and finish. Now, when we're talking NCAA, there's three divisions. Now, division three cannot give athletic scholarship. That's the most crucial point when we're looking at these three divisions, because unless you're super academic, it can make it extremely difficult um, to make it financially feasible to play at a D3 school. Not to say we dismiss D3 because there's some really great institutions have been there. But as you can imagine, in terms of us as a company, most of our athletes go to D1 or D2 when we're looking at NCAA schools. Um, something that we come across a lot and maybe Megan will argue different because she's at a D1 program. A lot of people have it in their mind that I want to go to a D1 program without really understanding what context that is in. Now, if you take Megan, for example, plays for a women's soccer team, NCAA D1. Her team will not get relegated or promoted. And also her school, Southeastern Louisiana, doesn't have D1 status based on how good their women's soccer team. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're looking at potential you know, suitors for yourself. And that's not to say that D1, you know, arguably is a great division. There's a lot of players that go on to become professional from that, particularly if you look at sports like basketball and American football. But obviously, in terms of how good their soccer program, it can vary. And the flip of that, myself having played NAIA and Milo playing NAIA, he'll also probably argue that he's played against NCAA D1 and D2 programs out of season and beaten. So it's not to say NCAA D1 isn't right for you, but it's just to say keep an open mind when you're coming into that. D3 might be difficult, but D1 and D2 um, financially can really be a great option. Now, as you can see, there's over 1,200 schools um, that can give sports scholarships within those NCAA divisions, um, over 24 sports, and you're looking at over half, or almost half a million athletes. So it's big stuff. So most of the people that have joined us today are international. So as you can imagine, if I'm an American student going through high school who takes my sport seriously, I want to get a scholarship at American University. So for then you to come in at a relatively late stage, even if you're looking two years in advance, as you can imagine, it's hugely competitive for places. And again, hopefully what Megan and Milo will echo as well is that the standard is good. You know, a lot of people I think dismiss the level of you know, a play and ability out there, but it's not a walk in the park. You're gonna to have to try really hard um, to earn your stripes and get in the teams, you know, the respective schools that you do go to. Um, in terms of GPA, when we're talking about GPA, it's grade point average. So they take your grades, for example, in England from GCSEs and also A-levels or BTEC, and they would average those out to get what is called a grade point average with a four being the equivalent roughly to an A, a three, a B, a C, a two, etc. Now, the reason why this is quite important, and if um, you talk to Megan and Milo, super academic people, I think they're both on 3.9 GPA out of four, which is amazing, um, is that you need to graduate above a 2 point or a 2.3 in order to graduate from your school. So it's really important to keep on top of your academics. Now, talk about NCAA, the other regulatory body is NAIO. Now, you can see straight off the bat from looking at the table that there's only 250 colleges, you know, that play sports within the NAIA. So you're talking a smaller governing body. A kind of stereotypical comment would be that they're typically in smaller rural locations as well. But for example, I played NAIA and we were in downtown Chicago. So there's some great schools in there. And again, in terms of the level of playing, it can be just as good as NCAA D1 or D2 teams programs as well. Um, there's only 14 sports as compared to 24. Less athletes, as you can see, around 60,000. Again, the benefits to that would be, like for my case, when I talk about my experience, was there's about 15 of us in the roster, but 12 of us had full tuition scholarships. Whereas at a D1 program, I'll be interested to see what uh, Megan has to say, some of them might have 30 to 50 players even if they've got a junior varsity team so as you can imagine the number of scholarships they can give per squad is going to be more competitive even within your own roster um, grade point average minimum is pretty similar 
um, and SAT we will talk about next. Hopefully we won't lose too many people at that point. Um, that's the entrance exam that you would need to sit for NCAA and NAA schools. Now, just to chuck another acronym at you to confuse you further, on the far right you'll see NJCAA. Now, as you'll see, this is a two-year colleges. So four-year is NCAA NAIA, two-year NJCAA. Now, a lot of people, again, dismiss community colleges because they think, oh, the, the football's not going to be as good. That's not necessarily the case. Community colleges are pretty much focused maybe towards athletes that aren't the most academically gifted, but it doesn't mean that their actual ability is any less than somebody who plays at a four-year school. As you can see, there's over 500 um, colleges and universities sorry, community colleges within the NJCAA, over 27 sports. And again, if you look compared to NAIA, there's almost as many athletes playing in that. Now, if you've got aspirations of going on to become professional, again, don't think that going to NJCAA is gonna stop that. What you do is two years at a community college, graduate with your diploma, and then we would help if you're one of our athletes, transfer you to one of the four year schools, so NCAA or NAIA, to finish your last two years, so still four years total, and the degree comes from when you finish um, your school, not from where you started. Um, so yeah, it's a great opportunity. And for those of you that follow Major League Soccer, you might have heard of a player called Dom Dwyer. He was someone who went to a community college, transferred to a four-year school, got drafted into Major League Soccer. He's from the UK. He's gone all the way full spectrum to actually get in his US citizenship and playing for the United States as well as being one of the top scorers in Major League Soccer ever. So if you're good enough, you'll still get picked up. So don't worry about that at all. And the good thing for community college route is, as you can imagine, the same as if you compare to an Oxford and a Cambridge to one of your local universities, the costs are going to be a lot less as well. So it wouldn't be unusual for a community college, tuition, food and housing at a community college being around $10,000. That's without scholarship. On the flip of it, NJ, you know, an NCAA D1 school might be forty, fifty, even sixty thousand dollars a year for that scholarship. So it's important when we're looking at all of these colleges. I haven't got a bias, you know, in terms of what's right for every single player that we sign. As long as it ticks the box for them, location-wise, academically, athletically, and most importantly, as a family, financially. So various different factors. But as you can see. Um, a lot of different options there for you and what we find is a lot of players in the UK might get approached by a specific college or university and think oh that sounds amazing I want to go to America but you know if, if a UK university contacted you and said we'd like you to come there you wouldn't just go okay brilliant where do I sign so it's important to keep an open mind and obviously that's our true value is helping you find the right school for you. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this next slide because I don't want to scare too many of you off. But if you're looking to go to a four year school, you have to sit an entrance exam pretty much. I mean, there are loopholes with the NAIA, but you're looking at the SAT or ACT. Now, quite a few of our players do take the ACT, which is basically like a European equivalent of the entrance exam. However, for most of our students, it's the SAT. Um, so lucky you, you get to sit almost a four or well, four hour exam when you're looking at the SAT. And there's three tests with in that which is English maths critical thinking plenty of questions to answer during that time and if you can see the amount of time per questions you'll see that it is quite intense um, and in terms of the score what you get as you can imagine don't panic too much because every single student athlete pretty much at a four-year university and that's whether they're playing soccer American football rugby golf tennis whatever sport they need to pass um, so anyone who's entering can you just uh, mute your audio if it doesn't or, or you know mute it automatically? Um, so yeah, it's, um, if you can look at the score range, it's out of sixteen hundred, and you know for athletes we like to say aim for at least a thousand. Um, for NAIA, you need to get nine seventy in order to hit their minimum criteria, and then that would mean that you're eligible to play NAIA. Every school within that might have slight variances, but pretty much you're going to be fine. With NCAA, another difference is a slide, they do a sliding scale. So if I've got straight A's, it actually enables me to score lower on the SAT to become eligible, which I always find a bit strange because if you're super smart, then you don't actually need the leeway, you know, the leeway on the sliding scale. But 
again, we provide all the support to our athletes. And again, I'll talk about the athletes area on our side, but we can give you practice exams, questions. We're also partnered with a specialist tutor that can give you um, a free tutor session for that. There's test centers all throughout the UK. Um, they're now reopening now, so you can book for August. Um, but again, there's gonna be one September, October, December too. So, you know, you'd only need to take one when you feel ready. For those of you that are listening right now that are looking to go out for 2021, I would advise you sit in the October one at the latest because a, it gives you another chance of doing a reset if it doesn't quite you know, work as well as you'd hoped. Um, and also, you know, when we're circulating and promoting our athletes to coaches, it does help if we can say, here's Megan or Milo, here's their academic background, here's their athletic background, here's their SAT, and then automatically they can start figuring out what that package could look like for you, which helps negotiations. So that's enough about the SAT. Obviously, in terms of us as a company, US Sports Scholarships, you know, I don't think you'll have accidentally stumbled onto this seminar today. So hopefully you already know quite a bit about us, but we're a specialist sports recruitment and consultancy company that helps, um, you know, talented student athletes in a variety of sports. The key thing for us is it's our mission to be industry leading in terms of our service. And we're pretty confident that we won't be beaten in terms of personal service that we offer for athletes. Obviously there are other companies out there um, and encourage you to, you know, look into that. And also you could do it yourself as well. I'll talk about the drawbacks of doing so. Um, we've secured over $20 million in scholarship for our athletes um, in the time that we've been doing this over 10 years placed over 600 athletes um, and what started was just three of us um, people that had terrible experiences ironically using companies like us is we're now growing to be a national and international company of over 50 people so we're experienced in the sense that I've been where you guys are albeit we didn't have zoom back then so it would have been a face-to-face -face. I've, I've sat there and, and learned about the process of America and pretty much instantly decided that I wanted to do it connected in the sense that you know when we started over 10 years ago we were having to push our athletes to coaches but as you can imagine the way that we operate was super selective we only signed 25 players per each gender sport per year um, as a result we've got a reputation for only signing and sending the best players so naturally coaches come straight to us ring me up you know Liam I'm looking for a rugby prop next year or a gold fire this is what i'm looking for what can you offer and they can obviously go off our recommendations for that so there's you know the value is the trust and the respect but the main thing is is really the personal touch so we have weekly touch points with our players during the whole process going out to america but also like to keep in touch with them when they're in america too hence why obviously we've got milo and megan joining us today the stars down there, uh, we want to be as transparent as possible and encourage you to talk to any athletes, obviously like Megan and Milo or their parents. So feel free to go on our trust pilot um, to see reviews that we've had from other athletes that have helped. Hopefully I've paid them enough and they've put a good one. But um, in all seriousness, you know, that's what's key for us is providing the best support because me personally, I pretty much got zero. Um, so that leads me on nicely to talk about my background here. Apologies for the photo. This was before, I'm surprised we've got colour photos, but this was before I could grow a beard as well. So looking a lot younger there. So I think lockdown has been harsh on me, but I won't, I don't really want to talk about myself too much because I'm already talking a lot here today. But the key points about my background was growing up, all I wanted to do was become a professional footballer. And for a lot of you here today, it will be similar regardless of what sport that you'd love to become a professional. Got to become a scholar at Ipswich Town. Again, it used to be great talking about them when they're in the Premier League, just finished in League One, lowest position in six or seven years. So not as good but I did my scholarship within the first year of my scholarship I tore my knee and I had four knee operations in four years and effectively got told that I should retire I hope hopefully that's not based on ability but I did get told that probably best to call it a day which obviously is really difficult to hear at the age of 18 when you've dedicated your life to your sport um, Ipswich were really supportive of me so I actually did my coaching badges did my B license and coached the under 13s for a year and a half prior to going out to America which was great experience for me and also enabled me to earn quite a bit of money while I was out in America as a coach on the side too but after being told that I wasn't going to make it as a pro, I, you know, I really needed to reassess where I wanted to go with my life. And my sister went to uni in London at UCL. Great. She got a law degree, also got herself in a ton of debt. I didn't really fancy that one. A lot of my mates who were a bit older who played at Ipswich and then maybe chose to go to the uni in the UK had warned me that 
maybe it wasn't the most professional environment and for them it's more of a social thing that didn't really appeal to me um, I've always been someone who's been super dedicated to my sport always wanted to do my best so for me the thought of having dedicated my life to it and I know Milo and Megan are similar as well you know super professional want to be the best that they can with their sport the idea of you know going on a night out and then showing up for a game wasn't really for me so again when somebody told me about the opportunity of playing in America, for me, living in Chicago for four years, coming out completely debt-free, training every day, flying to games, playing in front of thousands, um, and I said, getting a degree that's going to set me up for life. For me, it was a complete no-brainer. Um, you'll have never heard of the university I went to, which is fine, Illinois Institute of Technology, but again, that highlights why it's important to use a company like us, because there are so many options out there. So yeah, graduating in 2013, I'd already started US sports scholarships before that, inadvertently been helping players get out to America. We just about had social media back then, so people see me posting a selfie, living my best life out there, and wanting to do the same, so I did help quite a few players then. So the business just naturally grew out of there. But as I said, going back to my bad experience was that my video was circulated, offers came in, never heard of the company again was fortunate really to even find a deal and able to get out there. I remember talking to a coach and him saying, what was my SAT score? And I said to him, what is an SAT? It was literally that bad lack of service. So I managed to get out there in the skin of my teeth, really enjoyed it. But after year one, did fairly well, as you can see. I mean, I scored 61 goals in 69 games. Milo might agree and Megan that maybe the goalkeeping isn't as high as a standard as in the UK, but I'll take it that I knew where the goal was while I was out there. But after year one, 17 goals, was getting a lot of interest from other schools. So the school I was at was like $28,000 a year for tuition, which I had all covered, partly because I was an international and partly because I was on the soccer team. And then what I had to pay for was my food and housing, which probably came to about seven, dollars $8,000 a year. It's not cheap living in downtown Chicago. So some of you might be listening and thinking, well, $8,000 is quite a year. How are you able to come out debt-free? So what was quite good... <laughs> Sorry, someone's just joined that. Again, if you are just joining now, if you're able to mute yourself, that would be great. Um, but yeah, so I was able to work on campus, which was able to cover my cost of food and housing, which meant I was able to come out debt free. But going back to year one, because I had those costs, and although I was happy, I wanted to explore other opportunities because if they're going to cover all my costs, obviously mum and dad would have particularly been happy. I wanted to do so. So the company I was with, who ironically don't exist anymore, I'm not surprised with the lack of service they gave, was that... Um, they wouldn't help me. So I tried to get in contact with them. They wanted more money. I said, well, give me the highlight video. I'll do it myself. Again, they wanted more money. And then I never heard of them again. Luckily, I managed to stay there. I did enjoy my time, came up with a top degree um, and really enjoyed it. But the way that we operate, we always support our players for the four years while they're out there. And for anyone who joined us in the last seminar, a good example of that is Matt Bentley, because obviously he did three years at a D2 programme, transferred into Missouri State last year, a D1 programme, and then he got drafted into soccer which him, you know he himself admitted last week that without that transfer that probably would have never happened so we make sure that we support our players and athletes for the whole time while they're at in the states again few accolades there and milo and megan will probably outshine me but one of the things super proud of won all american of the year for 2011 and 12 for the entire country which was great because it's based on not only your football ability but your academics too Graduate with a perfect 4.0, so, you know, Megan and Milo, unlucky with the 3.9, you're never going to be able to get that up to a 4.0, but um, in all seriousness, obviously, you know, it's great that I was able to really concentrate my academics. Coming into doing a degree, wasn't bothered about academics at all, ironically, it was just about football. So for me, it was a life-changing experience to the point where I've even gone on to get my master's degree since moving back. That probably wasn't a smart decision either. I should have stayed out there for a year and got it for free being an assistant coach. But as you can see, for me, it's been life-changing experience, open up a lot of doors and avenues. And if you want to have any questions about my, you know, my time in Chicago um, and experience, please do ask them at the end. Um, but I'll keep that rather brief because obviously I want to talk about Megan and Milo more. Um, in terms of our team, as I said, Ellie joined us last week. Um, she heads up our women's scholarship. So she was one of, we sent her out in 2015. She's graduated, come back, now playing for Ipswich Town Ladies um, and helping with her own recruitment. So she's gone full circle like me and now helping the next generation. For those of you that are listening for various sports, again, just some faces that if you do come on board, you'd be familiar with. Andy heads up the golf. 
Brett heads up the rugby. He's from New Zealand. He actually did a scholarship here in the UK. Um, we've then got various different people that head up basketball, track and field, hockey as well. So please do inquire about that. Um, Billy Highton heads up one of our development squads in Hertfordshire called EDSV Academy. And Megan is actually a byproduct of that. So it'd be good to get her, her insights today. Um, Tommy Smith, who was at Sunderland last year, works as an ambassador for us up north. And also we're looking to grow our presence in New Zealand and Australia. So he'll be you know, crucial for that. Um, and then I know we've got a few people on the calls today that are from Lower Stuff Town and Football Industry College, who's another partner of us, and Andy Redden helps yeah, head that up for us. Now, we've talked about the NCAA, NAI, NJCAA, so hopefully you've got your head around the different divisions. Um, Again, I'll talk about it in a little bit. We've got a university database on our website where you can actually search through these schools to find out even more about them, which will be a really um, helpful tool for you. In terms of the companies and, and clubs that we work with, again, concentrating on football today because obviously it's a football specific, but in future weeks we'll have basketball, golf and rugby, the other sports. We work with a lot of MLS clubs, so whether it's New York Red Bulls, Colorado Rapids, Chicago Fire, um, really helpful for when our players have tours out to the States, we can get them free tickets to games. Some of our players have actually trialled at these clubs as well, um, so it really does open up doors for us. Talked about Football Industry College, EDSV Academy. I know we've got a few players here from AFC Sudbury as well today on the call. So these are all development squads where the reason why we've partnered with them is they've got a high level of football and ability that um, helps with the transition to go into America. And also, you know, they're doing full-time education as well. So we know pretty much that all of our athletes that are coming from these schools are going to be well suited to going out to America. And again, from a football perspective, we work with a lot of pro clubs such as Ipswich, Colchester. As you can see, naturally, if you're someone who's within academy, regardless of sport, you're going to be an ideal candidate for us as long as you're still in education. Uh, we've got a development squad out in Ireland called Irish Pro Academy. And the other logos there, we work with a lot of independent schools and the, the globe football there is global image sports who help facilitate our tours so again as soon as travel restrictions are lifted next year we'll be looking to do tours out to america so if that's of interest to you please do let us know after the seminar um, so going into what we do as a company um, our fundamental service package has always been the Premier Athlete package. We've introduced the online thing in the last couple of months, but this diagram here, and a lot of you will have seen this um, on our website already, is just kind of showing you that the full comprehensive support that we provide our athletes from day one when they sign on to us. And I know we've got a few players listening today who are signed players up to um, obviously when you graduate. So players like Milo and Megan who'll be graduating next year. So. Regardless of sport, again, obviously not with golf, but like with football, rugby, team sports, hockey, you know, we hold showcase events throughout the country throughout the year. As soon as we're able to, we'll be confirming details of that. Again, when I did my journey, I had a highlight video made for me based on one trial game and that was it. We would never do that. You know, we realise in a trial game environment, it's difficult playing with people that you don't know before. Everyone's trying to impress um, so again, what we do is we will continue to come and film you until we're happy with that footage. Um, and again, even if you're listening today and you decide America's not for you, if you did want a highlight video made, that's something that we can help with. Now, once somebody, you know, say after today, you think this is brilliant, we arrange a call to have with you and your parents privately, and then you decide you want to go ahead with the process, you'd be given a designated rep. So if it's local to the East Anglia region and it's football, for example, it'll probably be me. Um, we'll have a group chat on WhatsApp so that we can have those weekly or you know daily at some point touches. Um, we'd also have a shared Google Drive. So again, going back to my experience, my video was circulated, I had 40 schools come and contact me. It was a minefield. I mean, again, we had dial-up internet, but trying to find out these schools and which ones were good and having Skype calls with 40, 50 coaches was a nightmare. We have a joint drive of you where we can share with resources, updates, we'll have a spreadsheet, any interest or offers that come in. Um, say, for example, the coach wants to contact you as the athlete first, just let us know the name of the school or the coach. We'll then provide all the information in terms of location, how they did last year, um, how many internationals, what the scholarship could be, and our recommendations on that. Again, to help you make sure you end up at the right school. Now, again, going back to my experience, if I just skip to the profile, so say for example, so Jake, as an example here, my profile, when I went through it, I also had how much I could afford each year. So I said 8,000, so no surprise, I did end up at school that cost me $8,000 a year. Um, but we would never disclose financial um, situation of our families and our players because 
let's go to bat as if we can afford nothing. And even if it takes us additional negotiations, if we're able to save you $2,000 straight off the bat and that reduces it from eight to six, well, then we've just saved you $8,000 over the four years. So it's about that personal approach where we're able to get the best deal for our players. Um, and again, everything I had to facilitate myself as a player, whereas, you know, through our company, we're there for you for the whole journey, um, especially because we might be circulating a different player and they might be offering a better scholarship to them. We've worked with these schools for over 10 years, so we know what they are and aren't able to offer based on your academics and athletic profile. Um, we talked about the SAT and the SAT support we can provide. If you're looking to go to a four-year school, so going back to NCAA NAIA, um, you get, need to get cleared by the eligibility centre. So you need to prove that you haven't been a pro and that you've been in continuous education, essentially, minus the gap year. And again, we can provide support with that. And then kind of the best way to think of us is as a sports agent. You know, we're going to bat and contacting these schools and promoting you. So first and foremost, like Jake there, and like I said, you'd have your profile on there so that they can search via players you know coaches can um, and they can look at your profile you know hundreds con you know accessing that every single week but beyond that say there's two and a half thousand soccer universities would identify say at least 800 that might be a good fit for you um, and circulate your profile maybe of those 800 100 are looking for a player in your position maybe of those 170 offer the major that you offer and then as I said that's where that process starts where we'd have the spreadsheet tell you which could be a good fit and then maybe we get down to 20 which could be a good fit that's when you'd have those discussions with the coaches because as much as a school might look amazing on paper um, until you've had those conversations with coaches I'm sure all of you here will have had coaches that you'd like and coaches that you wouldn't it's important you go somewhere where you're going to fit in with their style um, and their approach and their mentality and also as a young athlete um, they're going to be like a parent figure for you while you're out in America so that's really important and then beyond that we don't we'd never really want to place an athlete at a school where there's no other international athletes as well because um, and, and sorry if I offend any Americans we've got on the seminar today but um, you know I'd never been to the States before they speak the same language but sometimes think they're from a different planet you've only got to look at Trump and again not getting political but um, they can be a bit unique so when there's times when you are missing home it's great to be around other internationals there was about 10 English guys on my team and it just made it a lot easier for me um, so yeah that methodical slow process is making sure we right you know end up at the right school for those of you that maybe want to do a visit once you've whittled it down to two or three we can help facilitate that journey and help with all the paperwork so that you might want to visit three in a week make a decision on that once travel restrictions are obviously lifted and then from that point it's the same as if you went to a university anywhere we need to get cleared by admissions so we can get your i-20 so we can book your visa obviously for athletes right now the embassy is closed you can still book visas but you can't uh, book appointments but you can't actually go to them hopefully that will soon be lifted for athletes looking to go out this year in terms of insurance obviously we're super lucky that um over here you know, we have like the NHS and over there in terms of injuries and stuff, you'd have to get medical insurance. Uh, most schools over there will cover your insurance, um, both athletically and also while you're just on campus. For those that don't, we do have partners that can help with that. And um, my classic story of that is a Scottish teammate I had. For those of you that have been to Chicago will know that it's pretty much like Narnia for about six months, well not six months, about four or five months of the year. Decided to show off in front of some American girls, did a backflip on, off the side of the house and his bone came through his leg, ended up spending about $18,000 in emergency surgery fees. So don't be that guy, uh, make sure you get your insurance covered. But again, we can help with that. And then as I said, the main thing is while you're out there for the four or five years, you know that you're covered and we'll provide you that support. So touch wood, it's never because you're not happy, but if after two years, or three years, even in the case of Matt Bentley, you're thinking, well, I wanna change school because it'll open up opportunities for me sports-wise, or even for the career that you wanna do afterwards. And obviously really intrigued to hear what Megan and Milo have planned, if they do have plans for um, when they graduate. Uh, we can support you with that. Um, and then, the, as I said, the big thing is just the ongoing career support. Now, I'll just quickly show you this. So athletes database, as I said, um, well, it's actually the coaches database is there's hundreds of coaches. They can search by position, sport, um, when you want to go out to America, and then they click through. And then on the right, you'd have your highlight video, regardless of what sport, all your academic profile, all your athletic profile. Yes, they can contact you directly if you want, but the whole point is that 
you, we would still be with you there um, throughout that that dialogue and, and dialogue and that conversation. And then for those that want to contact us directly, that's absolutely fine. Some of them might want to to know more about you before investing in time um, talking to you directly. Now, for those of you that do sign up to our Premier Athlete package, there's an athletes area on there, um, and as well as having a designated rep, whether it's myself or Andy or Brett or one of the other guys, is that um, there's a process timeline on there that will say you know, look, Milo, th this is where you are at day one. This is everything that you need to get done before going out to America. And if you click on each section, it will give you tons of resources in terms of video. So like, for example, you can see the SAT there, practice videos, practice exams, um, information on our partner if you wanted to have private tutoring with that. So everything that you need all in one place. So, you know, we've had that athletes area for about a year. It's proven super popular. And one of the key things that we've added to that is our online athlete, athlete package, easy for me to say, is the university database. So this is available to anyone. So whereas the Premier Athlete package, you'd have to be selected. So everyone in our team will review your um, profile. And then if we decide that we think that you're the right candidate to sign up for the process and go to America, we'd make you an offer out for that. And as I said, we have 25 gender sport offers per year. So 25 male soccer players, 25 female, same for golf, rugby, basketball, as you can imagine. Um, so I would like to show you if technology permits afterwards what this um, online database looks like. But essentially, as you can see, it looks similar to the coaches database. You can search by sports, um, by states, what division. And when I click on that, I think we've got, oh, we haven't got a slide in there yet, but I'll show you the video. It would open up uh, campus tour, information about the school, about their sports background as well. So again, my experience was I didn't have a clue which schools were good or not. And if I gave you guys the name of 50 schools, for those of you that haven't already been out to the States, you probably wouldn't you know, have an idea whether they're good or not. So as well as us providing support, you can do your own research. As part of this online package um, that's available to everyone, you could also fill in our onboarding form and we can create your athletic profile. So if I go... If I go back, you could have your profile on here, the same as one of our fully signed athletes, as well as being able to search our university database. So that's the online package. But as I said, that's all a standard um, if you were to sign up for our Premier Athlete package. So hopefully that's a bit clearer to you in terms of the packages. There is something on the site, which is a memberships page, um, which might help. But again, I'll send out useful links and resources afterwards. Um, I kind of touched on a lot of points already, but why would you use a company like us? We've got the internet. You could easily contact schools yourself. But as you can imagine, most head coaches don't get involved with the recruitment process until they've got a shortlisted and um, prospective athletes from their assistants. Um, we only offer 25 places on our program each year to make sure that you know, we're able to offer that personal service that I never got when I was one of 300 lads looking to go out to America um, and give you the best possible chance of getting the best possible deal. We've been doing it over 10 years, so we're one of the longest um, established companies in the industry. 100% um, success rate on players that are looking to go out to America. Um, which again is unheard of, but because we're so selective, um, we're able to ensure that our athletes get the offers um, that are right for them. As I said at the beginning, you know, we have 20 million in scholarships for athletes. Something that a lot of athletes always, and their parents in particular might ask is, you know, can I get a full scholarship? When I'm talking about full scholarships, it means the cost of tuition, food and housing is all covered. Sounds brilliant, I know. Um, doesn't mean it's the right offer for you. I had full scholarship offers, but the schools, I think thinking back like in the middle of nowhere, poor academic program, poor athletic program. In hindsight, I would have probably moved home after six months if I was missing home. So for me, it was important that I didn't do that. I went to a school where I was having to pay towards the cost, but I wanted to because I was living in downtown Chicago. We won the conference two out of four years, um, top 100 academic schools in the country. So for me, it ticked all the boxes and everyone's different. You know, Milo wanted to go to Montana. Megan wanted to go to southeastern Louisiana. So, you know, everybody's different based on what their preferences are. Um, in terms of cost, and again, I'm sure parents will have some questions later on, but um, pretty much over 90% of our athletes are paying under $10,000 a year towards those tuition, food and housing, which we realise it can still be a, a lot of money if it's like for me when I was paying 8,000, but I was able to work, which more than covered those costs for me. Um, we've got trial games all throughout the no one else has got that out there um, and as I said we offer four-year four support for all our Premier Athletes. Um, 
I'm sure that all sounds amazing. So going out to America, potentially coming out debt free, um, even just living in America is great. Obviously, unfortunately, I can't stand here and go, thanks for doing our application. I've looked at your video. I've looked at your academics. I've look, looked at your playing history. This is how much scholarship you'll get. As we said from the outset, every school's different. Some schools are as cheap as $10,000 a year. Some are as expensive as probably 100,000 if you're looking at Harvard. However, you know, what we can guarantee is by being selective, offering that personal support, we can guarantee that, pretty much guarantee, we'll give you the best possible chance of getting the best scholarship offers from the best schools and whether that's full scholarship offers or not, and also in the locations that you want. Um, that being said, um, which should lead me nicely to my next point, and, Milo will, uh, rec well, both of you, Milo and Megan will recognise that picture there. It's Amber Pearson, um, who plays on the women's soccer team at Rocky Mountain uh, with Milo. And obviously, Megan is a former teammate of Amber as well from EDSV. There's still a lot to this process that's under your control. You know, if you're a great player and you've got decent academics, you know, we can help facilitate and get the best possible scholarship. But if you don't try with your BTEC and finishing off your A level or with your SAT exam, putting the work in, um, or how you play when we film you, obviously can be key to that as well. Um, and, and how the conversations go with coaches, there's a lot of it that obviously is still down to you. But again, we provide all the support throughout. Um, I don't want to go into too much information on this talent matrix. It's really a, a loose guideline. So don't uh, feel despondent if you don't fall into a certain category based on division. And also don't feel like you definitely get a D1, you know, the, the top school because you have played at an academy. It's just a very rough um, matrix of based on our experience, you can loosely fit into one of these categories based on sports. Unfortunately, the slide isn't big enough to include basketball, track and field hockey, but again, for some of the core sports that we offer, um, it gives you an indication. Um, in terms of kind of the themes throughout me talking earlier was it's about finding the right school for you, academically, athletically, location, financially. So I wouldn't expect you to know what these logos are of um, teams out in America. However, again, it highlights why we're key to the process. I, didn't, I wouldn't have known who any of these schools are, but I can assure you they're all top programs in NCAA, NAIA, and JCAA, and it shows that we've got a breadth of you know, placing players at the best schools, regardless of divisions. Just looking now, obviously, Megan, your school's on there, um, Southeastern, and also Rocky Mountain have made it as well. But these are just examples of schools that we work with. Um, at that point, I realised I've done a lot of talking and also covered a lot of topics. Obviously, with the seminar, we want to make it as concise, particularly when it's hot outside, and keep you engaged. So hopefully that's given you enough appetite to know what the process looks like, regardless of if you were to sign up to our process, but also the added value that we can deliver as a company. At that point, I would like to introduce you to two of our Hall of Famers. Now, to qualify to be in our Hall of Fame, you have to have a grade point average of over 3.75 and also uh, won awards academically and athletically so it's a huge honor um, to be kind of short so we do a short list for it to be shortlisted but obviously to be awarded for it is massive so Milo um, was awarded that back in 2017 and Megan was our recipient this year I don't want to talk about them too much because obviously I will let them do the talking at that point I'll just make sure Milo if you can, I think you're first, if you can unmute. Yes, hello. Cool, good stuff. Feel free to turn on your camera as well. I'm, so, I'm sure people are sick of just watching me. Um, but at that point, I'll pass you on, Milo, if you could just give us a background um, about you as a player and what you're up to now, but also what you're planning um, once you're done at America. Yeah, so, I mean, football's been my life. I mean, I had a dad who's... I don't know, I was the coach of coaches, the way I describe him. I had no choice other to not play football. And I started when I was probably like three. And obviously my dad was involved with Coach United. I don't know, he was like director of football at one point before he moved on into teaching and stuff. But in terms of my life, I was always around him. I was going to youth team games when I was like six. I was joining in in the warm up, that kind of thing. So when I turned seven, I signed for Colchester. I remained with Colchester. Um, all the way through to as a second year scholar. I received my scholarship pretty early when I was 14. Between 13, 14, 15, I was flying. I had represented Northern Ireland, uh, my country at youth level, under 15s and under 17s. So in terms of getting to America, that, that certainly looked good on my essay resume in terms of coaches want to look at me. Being a second year scholar then, when I was my first year scholar, I... Um, 
I don't know. There was something wasn't right in terms of when I was playing. I was confident in terms of when I was like under 16 and stuff. When I got to under 18, something just wasn't right with where I was, I say, mentally, in terms of confidence, motivation wise. I wasn't really starting, wasn't really playing. So then I think it was around that time, maybe I think I can't think what year that was, but certainly when I was 16, 17, I started looking to Liam in terms of as a, like, as a more of an exit route. But like in terms of my academics as well as my ability, I'm probably as good in the classroom as I am as a soccer player. So that means in terms of me wanting to get, definitely get in contact with Liam, so I was already confident in terms of where I could go before I even spoke and had the conversation with Liam and looked at offers. So then after I um, was unsuccessful, let's say of getting a pro, um, I worked for a year. So that was when I was 18 and 19. I did a year out before I went straight away. I mean, I know, um, I know most of boys that have come through Sudbury, you know, boys that are also at cultures that I didn't take a year out and they do perfectly fine. I took a year because more, it was more for me to, better make a decision. Obviously, it's a tough decision to come out here and I wanted to fully, let's say, evaluate my options in terms of schools and offers before I fully committed to a school I wanted to go to and that's where Liam really came in. So I took my, I started with Liam. I reckon I started my process probably a year and a half, maybe close to two years. I probably signed on maybe two years before I eventually left or at least it was like Christmas, year and a half, I think, before I eventually came. And in that period, straight away, like Liam said, I think with his, um, was your step-by-step -step guide that you now have online? Yeah. Me and Liam pretty much did it more of the phone, saying what's next or having a date. So I knew when I had to get cleared by the NEIA. I, originally, I, was, I got cleared by both the NEIA and NCAA. It wasn't necessarily a choice that I knew for sure that I wanted to be in one of those leagues. It's like, it's like what you kind of do. You try to make yourself fully available for any school, any program, any team, so that you have the best opportunity to select the best place that you want to go to. So I was cleared by both. I did my SAT, uh, I think it was Brentwood International School. That wasn't too far away for me, seeing as I'm from Colchester. Um, got a good score. So in terms of building up, let's say, I don't know, I keep saying my resume or like my, my profile or whatever. It was all about trying to tick boxes to make yourself seem most attractive and most reflective of who you are and where you are in terms of your academics and um, athletic ability. So in turn, then, uh, so through that year, I worked as a coach for Colchester, bit similar, kind of a similar story to Liam. I was involved with not necessarily academy, but I was certainly shadowing the academy teams under nines and the tens. I worked closely with under sixes and under sevens of our uh, more like our development centers, so the boys that were going inside the academy, uh, I, I coached in school, so I, I, I kind of raised a little bit of money as well as I was playing non league. I was playing for, I don't know if people, you mentioned this, some AFC Sudbury boys. I played for AFC Sudbury uh, midweek because I was playing for like teams like um, Brantham, Hadley, with an O, those kind of teams. I mean, the problem I had was that I think I remember telling Liam that everybody knew I was going to America, so nobody really wanted to fully take me on and play me in a team because they knew I was going to be leaving soon. And obviously trying to, trying to go into a team where you look into next season is a bit tough when you know that one, one guy is definitely going for real. That didn't help me. But so I just played, I played where I could at that point. I wasn't necessarily um, fussed about my direction in, in England because I knew I'd have four years, four years opportunity to play in America. So then around that time, let's say January, January of around Christmas before I decided to come, so like let's say December of last year, I had was when my office started flooding in after I got my SAT score. Um, on top of that, so I did a BTEC. I know I imagine if there's any second year uh, scholars, football scholars here, or I think I know the Sudbury boys do the BTEC as well. I did a BTEC, and obviously a BTEC, I got a I think it's called a, was it a triple triple distinction, triple star distinction, something like that. So the top one, I just mean it. In terms of my England friends, so you do like three A-levels, I had more UCAS points than they did with a BTEC. So I know people talk down to BTEC, but in terms of making me seem, let's say, more smarter and more intellectual, it did help certainly with uh, academic scholarships and stuff like that. I also did a maths A-level on top of that. So when I was going through my scholarship, I, I thought, like, I, I thought it was more, not so for America, it was more for, let's say, if I want to go to university in general, that... I wanted as much, let's say, knowledge or as much uh, qualifications or certificates as possible to make me seem good or ready to go to 
university. So I didn't, I, I don't know, looking back at it now, it was pretty stupid of me because it was absolutely crazily hard. Being a full-time scholar, training twice a week, and when I got home, I was studying the maths A-level, and if anyone's taking maths A-level, you know, it's severely not fun. It really was not fun. I mean, I don't think I've done anything in, in university yet as that compares to that as of yet. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know it was crazy. So yeah, so I got a lot of I, I built up let's say like like I said my profile. I made myself look good. And then the the offers came flooding in. So I don't know if you some of you guys have probably like you said, you already signed, you already seen your offers, the way Liam breaks it up, the different categories, different like criteria that you want to compare to, all those diff all those things that I guess like I had a list, I had a list of priorities. So like obviously Liam, Liam, I guess Liam's process and how he chose was very similar to me. Because I, I, when you come out of the game, you know, come out of the game playing every day for what, I don't know how long of my life, like two years scholarship, I've trained every day, I was in the building every day, cleaning boots every day, you know. I kind of missed that things. And in my year out of coaching, the only, th the only thing that got me through that year was knowing that I was going to have four more years of it. You know, that I had that longevity that kind of looked to look forward to, to work to and try and get myself fit and best ready to go be independent live on my own in a whole new country so with my offers i was looking for things such as like financial was very important to me like i did not want to put any pressure on my mum and dad in terms of helping me pay it off so i looked at financials and obviously being coming out from colchester in terms of the eligibility they're sometimes a bit eerie and those kind of things and they make, make it more difficult to ask more questions especially i took a year off they'll like quizzing me on whether or not I've actually been, done a year at university, those kind of things. So it's all very important to obviously check with Liam and make sure what you qualify for and how to go through that process. But I, I got cleared and I was good for both, amazingly. And then, then it was just a matter of talking to coaches and willing down your offers. I must have had, I don't know, in my spreadsheet, I remember looking back and maybe like the, the other year, because I was trying to look at other teams that made to nationals and other teams I had offers from. But my list, my my spreadsheet. I was I was like quite amazed at the amount of teams that were offering. But then again, I I can see why. I had a very good academics, and I don't know if I say I played from Northern Ireland under 17s. I'm pretty sure that would cause some eyes to come look my way, even though they don't know if I played or whatever. But I chose. I looked. I looked more for financial. I was very curious on the standard of the team. I did not want to go to a team that loses. You know, in terms of my. Like I, I probably would have come home if I went to a team that loses. Uh, like being a competitive, wanting to be, be the best you can possibly be. I want to go to a team that wins because I know I, I feel like I, I can contribute to a team that does well. So with Rocky, the team that I did try is we, I don't know, the previous years they've made nationals near enough every year. They've either won the conference or been runners up for God knows how many years. And that's continued now. That's the good thing that's continued now. And I've also helped to contribute too. Another thing important, like Liam said, like internationals, I, I, I was very like, I was really like certain that I wanted to go to a school of other internationals. There were some great programs that offered me uh, D1, D2, and EIA. But when I looked in their roster, they were all Americans or they're all American based players. And yeah, like, like Liam, it's no disrespect. It's just you want that sense of home. You want something that, or something that reminds you of being in the same boat. Like when I came in my freshman year, I joined with a boy from Scotland who I roomed with. We had two German soccer players as roommates and um, a couple of Americans and some other boys, like loads of Germans that actually came. But we've had Brazilians as well, Spanish boys from Spain, um, boys from um, Guatemala, like different. I had a whole kind of like multicultural kind of experience when I came when it wasn't necessarily all from England. But the biggest thing was that we we're all in the same boat. We we're all away from home. We we're all trying to make a living. We we're all trying to break into the team we're all trying to um get a degree so in terms of making me feel more comfortable having other people who are away from home not from not in their natural country certainly contributed to me having a happier stay so like in so then um location wise i personally i that's for me and my disagree i didn't want a city in terms of where I wanted to go, I didn't want a city. I wanted to be all in one place, one campus where I didn't have to go. Like my sister, for example, uh, my sister is very similar. My, my sister Mia, she's also um, one of Liam's clients. She's me and my dad. Me, my mum, my mum's not too happy that we sent we sent two of our kids out to America and she doesn't get to see us anymore. But no, we thrived under Liam's opportunities that we kind of got. But yeah, so me and my sister, we were all on basically a one campus place. Other schools, I know there's another college, a D2 school where I am in Billings, Montana. 
they have their campus, but then they have to drive maybe about 15 minutes to where they actually train. And in terms of me, I didn't want to do that. You've got to think going to America, I didn't have a car, I didn't have any methods of transport, don't know what the public, public transport is like. So I wanted everything to be in walking distance so I can achieve everything on my own. But then like, but that's, that's another thing I like to say is that um, when you go to America, being from England or being from wherever you are, like parents of other players will absolutely adore you. Like I've been looked after by you know, every parent on the team who have been in my town. Like it, it's almost like, it's almost scary because they kind of understand that these boys away from home, they'd have families, like the amount of um, Thanksgivings I've been to, President Day, uh, July the 4th celebrations, I've, eat, I've, I've surely eaten well in America with other families helping me out. But in terms of my experience, like so far, I mean, I've done three years now. Um, unfortunately, I've got three Bs, so I cannot compete with Liam's 4.0. But who knows? Maybe I'll retake them and get on get onto Liam's level. But uh, we've made the national tournament once. We got to Elite Eight. We played in the stadium with. I shared the field with some absolutely incredible players, like 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 Liam said. In terms of NEIA. Any IA isn't as doesn't make like ESPN as much as um, D1 schools, but it doesn't necessarily mean our standard is any any worse. A lot of internationals, due to eligibility, due to the eligibility issues, are unsuccessful with getting into the NCAA. So you'll find I've played against some 25-year-old Serbians who like played professionally back home and different kind of crazy players that like a friend, I remember a Frenchman that was playing for like PSG up until he was like 19 or something like that. And he's come out to America in the NEIA, those kind of, those kind of different things that you witness and stuff like that is, is certainly where the standard is. And, and watching those, watching that my year, I think my year, we lost to the team in the quarterfinals to the team that eventually wanted, I think it was Central Methodist. And like I said, that I got, is a standard like all above. Like I feel I, I'm above the standard sometimes occasionally with some teams in my conference, but going to that level, you're surely amongst it and you have to rise as funny as a team. We need all of us. So my team basically is full of internationals. I think from goalkeeper to forward strikers, whatever you want to call us, um, is full of internationals. And like, like Liam said, in terms of NEIA schools, we've, we've got a lot of players who are on good scholarships in order to come out here. We, we have a much smaller roster. We don't have a JV team or anything like that. Much closer group where we're all competing. Not necessarily all starters, but all competing to try and drive us to be a team that certainly wins the conference every year. And that's our, that'll be our goal next year to qualify automatically for nationals and try and compete and better off what we achieved uh, two years ago with um, getting to the Elite Eight, as, as the Americans would call it. But no, in terms of my experience in Montana, don't get me wrong, Montana is different. It's far different to Colchester and Essex, where I'm from. It's not that I wouldn't, not saying I don't like it. It's just like, it's just, a, it's just the best way to say it. it's just different. And you learn to get used to it. Um, Billings, where I am, is a town very similar to the size in Colchester. So in terms of that, it's no different. Good thing about where I am is that I can, I'm looking out my window right now and I can see the airport. Like I, I, I can, I, not that I would walk there because it's up a bit of a cliff, but I have a five minute drive to the airport and I'm on campus. I, I've, I've also had opportunities to work like Liam has. I currently am a groundsman in facilities with my campus where I basically mow the grass all day long. That is my job. But sometimes as an international, you learn to know that um, jobs are hard to get in terms of being able to be paid. You can do a lot of voluntary jobs, but in terms of being paid, you have to either work on campus or work within an internship. You can't go down, I don't know, to your local whatever, cinema, McDonald's, whatever, and go apply for a job because it has to be either towards your uh, major in terms of um, your job or where you want to graduate in, or you can just work on campus. So I try to work on campus. I mean, I get looked after. I, I work loads of hours. Um, I don't, like Liam said, it's pretty much impossible to work during the fall, during the season. Far too busy with uh, practicing, lifting, that kind of stuff all day long, classes, and obviously you have to go to classes. But yeah, so in terms of opportunities to work, certainly in my college, I've had them. I've made, I made a good amount of money. Not necessarily I need to, because I've been fortunate, like Liam said, where I literally just pay for food in terms of my scholarship. My scholarship pretty much has made me fortunate enough where I 
literally just pay for food and that's not like obviously I, most colleges do have the option of like a campus cafeteria but now that I've moved on and got older I've pretty much moved into an apartment on campus where I have a fully functioning kitchen so in terms of myself I don't necessarily need in terms of my tuition bill need to pay for food I can just pay for it whenever I go shopping or uh, grocery shopping but yeah in terms of I'm pretty sure I've, I've covered it like classes I go to a private college so it's not like your big state colleges like for example I don't know you could go to a class and you could have 200 people and, and your professor won't know you I go to a really small college where I'm taking accounting classes now and there's literally only five of us in the class in terms of like a in terms of like a size of students at your school, that's another thing I considered. Like I like being known by my teachers. I like to be known as in, I like to be known I'm a hard worker. I like to be known that I'm pretty smart at what I'm doing. I don't want, I don't want my professor to look at a, I don't know how to say, a, a, a test and not picture a face to a name, which it does, does uh, happen at other schools. So I have a very small, I don't know what my, I reckon I have probably about my, my, this college is probably no bigger than my secondary school. My secondary school is probably close to maybe 1500. I reckon my college is probably about the same. And being that literally probably about 50% of students on campus are all athletes, soccer team, football team, volleyball team, basketball team. The majority of us are all athletes all staying on campus. So in terms of that as well, is that my school is very understanding of athletes having to travel, having to miss class because I don't know, in terms of my school, literally going to class makes a huge difference whether you get that, I think for NIA, like Liam said, was a 2.0 or maybe 2.2 or 2.3 GPA. So that's basically a C grade. In terms, of, in terms of going to class, working towards getting that C grade, that's what I tell my players. Like I have friends who aren't as fortunate as myself where I feel more comfortable in the classroom than they are and they'll happily help them try and do better in their studies and other them, well I would only help you if you go to class and it's as simple as that if you go to class you're certainly going to succeed in terms of going to Rocky but yeah private private uh, colleges versus a um, big big state um, college certainly plays a part in terms of classroom size and um, being able to have some kind of personal interaction with your professors and like I think it's certainly worked towards me learning more like being able to actually ask questions and you're in a big room with i don't know let's say 100 people in it like a big conference room whatever um it's very hard and very uh uncomfortable sometimes to put your hand up and ask a question i can i pretty much on a i say not necessarily a colleague but certainly almost a friendship level some of my teachers where i can ask questions freely and trying to learn and better myself in terms of my uh major business and accounting yeah, but yeah no. what was that yeah, unbelievable um, insight there, Marla, going through your journey. I guess one thing I'd like to know is, is have you already got plans in place for after you graduate next year or are you still undecided? I'm undecided, but the, the best thing with what I've done, I've, I'll always have options. So, I, I mean, like in terms of like, like something that you mentioned earlier about um, being kind of a grad assistant, I, I think certainly taking a, gra uh, a master's in business is certainly something I'm looking into. I mean, I do have a year, yes, I probably should have things in place by now, but the thing is I don't have a rush. I could also utilize an OPT. Uh, an OPT is basically an additional year to your visa to work in your major. So I could stay in America after my graduation. I won't be kicked out of the country or anything, and I could continue to work in business or accounting or, or whatever field your um, degree is in, whether you're a psychology major or a sports science major, you will get an additional year to continue to work and maybe gain some knowledge into your field so grad assistant is one thing um also like pretty i've been in a relationship with a girlfriend for three years when i first met her in, in a freshman year she's from billings so her family's been great to me as well in terms of making me feel comfortable being a second family so in terms of her like she she wants to be a pa so she'll be doing two years in america as well so the likelihood is i'll be trying to take two years as well and whether if I can get a grad assistant or an OPT or looking to do a um, master's like I could be a master's in accounting or a master's in um, business but don't get me wrong I still have ambition to play that I, I think one of the only thing that I in, in, um, involves in my future for certain is trying to play you got to think you go whatever it was from the age of seven to the age of 18 of coaches you know I'd like training god knows how many sessions a week with all different coaches of like 
decent level of coaching where I've learned so much, then going men's football, then coming to Rocky for four year, three years, going on four. Um, it's almost like a, a waste, a waste of like my talent. You know, you've got to put, think about the hours that you, you've spent um, trying to be the best you can, trying to learn, trying to learn off coaches, trying to execute your technical ability on the field or whatever. I certainly think I'll go home at some point just to see, just like, just to try my luck again, you know, P opinions may change. I might be a different player since I've been in America in terms of opinions in England. And so I might, might find myself being able to climb higher up the starting non-league, starting semi-pro, whatever, climb, climb as high as I can up the non-league pyramid, put it that way. Yeah, no, that's great. Such great insight, particularly, obviously, with, like you mentioned, in terms of the methodical approach you took. You decided to take a gap year. I myself did the same, but mine was more because I left it too late. Like, as Milo said, he signed up like a year and a half to two years in advance. So we were able to really make sure that we found the right school to him. And obviously, you know, Milo was pretty sure in terms of what he wanted that experience to deliver for him. And obviously, from what it sounds like, it's been able to do that for him. Obviously, discussed some great points in terms of being able to work out there. As I said, I mean, I used to work five hours a week, but got paid as if I worked 40, which would be amazing now. Um, but obviously, they can't be seen to be paying you directly. So working on campus and, you know, bending the rules a little bit to make sure that it works for you financially is definitely something that can work. Um, obviously, Milo talked as well about doing his maths A-level. I did a business A-level as well, and that, that was tough, but it did give me good preparation going out to America. Maths definitely wasn't my strong point, so I actually cheated my 4.0 a little bit by doing community college classes in the summer um, just for maths. So I think I was a bit obsessed with keeping that 4.0, but it made my life easier. But it brings up a good point that, again, during the summer, a lot of American students go home for that period. So for me personally, it gave me an opportunity to work more, also take summer classes so that during the season, you know, soccer specifically is a full sport. It meant that I could take less classes and concentrate on my sport. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate that insight, Milo. I've got more questions for you uh, following this, but also wary of time. So just go on next, going to pass you on to Megan. Um, again, don't want to talk too much. Um, I'll let her do that herself. Uh, da, da, da. I'm just, yeah, so I will unmute you if I can get that to work. Are oh, you already unmuted? Megan? Yeah, I can do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Are you, have you got your camera? Are you joining us visually? Is it not showing me? I'm on camera. Oh, is it? Maybe it's just because I'm sharing the screen that it's not doing it, but it didn't Milo either. Um, so I think everyone's just having to put up with my face. But once we get out the share screen um, of the slideshow, we'll open up for questions anyway. But as I said, Megan's um, achieved unbelievable success out in the States, both academically and athletically. Um, as Milo, the reason why I paired these two up to do the chat is because um, obviously you've got men's soccer and women's soccer, but also you've got Milo talking from an NAIA point of view, which again was my experience, but thought it'd be great to get an insight from somebody who's playing at a very high level at NCAA D1 as well. So that being said, I'll pass it on to you, Megan. And yeah, just please give us some insight about your experiences to date. And then obviously ending with what your future plans are as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, like Milo would say, I was pretty football mad from young, having brothers that just wanted to play and for me female football still wasn't quite big enough so I was just playing with boys teams um, and then it came to a point where girls couldn't play with the boys so I had my dad got his coaching license and created a little team um, from there I got uh, scouted to play for MK Dons which lucky for me I was there for from the age of nine until I think 17 when obviously we transitioned to adult football um lucky for me my friend amber which was on the slide earlier showed me um introduced me to edsd and um they were like became my family pretty soon they created so many opportunities for me i got to play like a professional which girls obviously don't get much opportunity for but like training every day going to school it helped me to get my BTEC, which obviously, like Milo also said, for UCAS points was excellent towards acknowledgements and stuff like that. Um, and then first year at EDSC, they introduced me to Liam because they were partners. And I knew from the off, even with other 
companies that Liam was going to provide the service that most people deserve if they're wanting to go to America. It's quite daunting, the process, I guess, of as well for parents, like sending your kids halfway across the world. But knowing you had someone like Liam and his company alongside you who literally would step by step how to get everything done, they'd give you links and everything you needed to get your tests done. They tell you about your eligibility. And a big thing for me was, so at EDSV, I obviously then got an opportunity at London Bees, which was a Super League team, which added to my resume. But Liam put together this highlight video, which somehow made me look like I could score goals and I was relatively above my pay grade. But um, it was excellent. He, They really supported me. When my office came through, Milo said it too, he creates a spreadsheet and it was quite overwhelming at first to see how many people actually were interested based on my academic and my success in football. I also got an opportunity with England Colleges, which really helped as well there. Um, but yeah, with the spreadsheet, he laid it out. So it basically, he put things in green, which matched all of my like my requirements or that I was would would help contribute to my process over there he put things in yellow which were considerations and then he put things still showed me the offers but he put things at the bottom which he just didn't think would quite suit me which still gave me the opportunity to obviously explore them but it kind of helped me um minimize that stress of like talking to all these schools um and then i guess it just came to a point where we had to start looking into the schools individually which he again was there by my side to talk to me through it um tell me which schools are good or which he's heard of the new process where he has the university guide and stuff i think will be excellent and i if i went back i'd definitely utilize that more because i think that's the scary part not knowing exactly where you're going or uh, what the campus is like, what the number of students is like, how their academics are. Um, and for me, academics was just as important as athletics because for obviously females, unfortunately, we've not got quite got the avenues I'd say the boys do following. So I'd definitely make sure you do focus just as much on your academics and you'll find a school that does suit both for you just as much uh, in the classroom as it does on the field um, so yeah after that came I got down to I'd say about 10 schools and then that was when we start he uh, Liam stepped in again and started saying who do you want to speak to like I'll give you then emails they'll email you across and then you can set up times to call um, email just being constant talks with so then you can obviously get a feel for them as a person as well what they're about the environment I got to down to three and it was quite a last minute one for me southeastern um but my coach I think Liam sent it to me like I was making a decision on another school and then Liam sent it to me I spoke to the coach instantly he was unbelievable like from the off I knew coach McBride was going to be the coach that I needed confidence wise he's helped massively uh, the school was a perfect fit academic wise I looked into it for my major that I wanted on the field we're competing obviously at a d1 level which is phenomenal some of the teams we play you literally it's for girls as well who like I've said like boys do get to sometimes experience that scholar side of things but for girls no one really gets to train seven five days a week play two games go on the road travel stay in hotels be fed for free all of this it's honestly unbelievable the experiences you get and I I just took this chance like I knew that was the school for me he made it a family environment and from there Milo also said everyone makes you feel comfortable you're literally like a celebrity even though you've not achieved anything you're just an English person in another country and families take you in. I've met some amazing people. They're like, I've, I, one thing I do recommend is if you can speak to your coach, um, host families are massively helpful. There's just someone that you can talk to, like they're 
home cooked meals. They have usually have family themselves, and I think that's a very beneficial thing. Um, also, with the international side of it, having an international student on the team. For me, at the time, I only actually had about two, but one girl from England came with me, and she's now my best friend. We do absolutely everything together. We live together. We go. Th we went through it all together. So if you can obviously look at that side of it, I think that's massive. But yeah, I, I honestly couldn't talk more highly about where I'm at, what the opportunities you get out there. And if you get the chance to do it 100%, and I think Liam's such an amazing person to have alongside you because three seasons in, I've still got one more to go. And he's messaging us monthly to check up on us and finding out how we're doing, if we need help and stuff. So I would definitely do it all over again if I could. Yeah, that's often my feeling as well. Maybe I'll shave this beard off again and see if I can get another year of eligibility. <laughs> But honestly that's what i'm fighting for right now just to see if because <laughs> of the coronavirus they'll give me an extra year on top of that yeah well that is something they're looking at aren't they it's not taking the season away from you and then i guess kind of lastly really interested to hear what your plans if any at the moment after graduation um so i've got a f um i'm like like milo also said i'm definitely interested in a grad assistant job i'd like to get my master's and i think opportunities out in america are second to none for that you get everything paid for and you work gaining experience so I think that's massive but it's always been a dream to play professionally so if I can get that opportunity somewhere in the world it might not necessarily be in the states but if I could get a few a few seasons to play pro I'd definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks again. Brilliant insight there. And hopefully what everyone who's listening will get from that is both Milo and Megan are two people that really um, highlight how great an opportunity this can be, but also how they've had to put the hard work in over their last three years in order to make sure that their academic profile is high and also, you know, progress as a player. I think if you look, both of them have played over 50, 60 games within those three years that they've been out there. And like Milo was talking about earlier in terms of what his resume look, looked like going out to America, well, actually, both of them have put themselves in great positions in terms of their resume coming out of America as well. So both of them have opportunities to potentially be an assistant coach out there and do their master's. Both of them have got opportunities to potentially work in America or if they choose to come back to the UK and work. And obviously the degree acts as a great differentiator. You know, if I've got two people that are going for a job and someone's got the life experience of being out in America independently, um, being in part of a, you know, a high pressure environment in terms of playing high level college sports and also getting a degree from a very reputable um, institution, it really can set you aside. So thanks again for your insights then. I think I've got a couple more slides, obviously wary that we've been going for an hour and 40 now, which is great, hopefully provided a lot of valuable insight to those that are still with us listening. Um, as I said, for those that have um, had to leave, no problem at all. This recorded uh, seminar will be available for you as well. Just want to really run through some quick FAQs and then anyone who's got messages, please start putting them into the message inbox and we'll definitely get through all of them. I'm sure all of you have heard enough from me, but no doubt you'll have questions for Megan and Milo as well. There you can see on the picture is Ellie Rosta, um, who heads up our women's soccer. So if you're listening right now, no doubt you've already applied for us and no doubt you will be eligible because you've been in continuous education or taking a gap year and are playing at a very high level for your sport. Highlight videos obviously depends what sport you're doing. You know, if it's golf, we'll come and follow you, do three holes, make sure we've got the right footage. If it's football or rugby, we hold trial games. Um, same with basketball. So whatever it is you need, and as I said earlier, it's not just relying on that trial game footage. We're able to come and film you to make sure that footage is right. Because as much as we've got contacts at two and a half thousand sports giving universities, First and foremost, they're going to want to see what you're like as a player. So the highlight video can be very critical for that process. Can you take a gap year? We've already addressed that. Myself and Milo um, both did that. Um, I guess the main benefits are to save money um, because there are ultimately going to be costs out there. Even on a full scholarship, you're going to have the costs of flights or potentially insurance and also just social living. Um, but obviously a lot of athletes I know listening will want to go out straight after finishing their BTEC or A-level. 
exams we've definitely talked about that enough so don't worry i won't talk about that sat or act anymore what can you study when you go out to america hopefully again you'll have seen i studied business marla done business and accounting um megan remind me what you're studying uh i studied kinesiology okay cool so as i said as long as the university that you're looking to go to offers it as a major you're not restricted what you need to study ideal time to apply as i said i left it way too late it meant that i had to take a gap year which is absolutely fine but you know examples of megan and milo who signed up a lot earlier milo talking earlier about a year and a half to two years in advance the benefits of doing so is the earlier you sign up to the process more scholarships are available for example, we're talking soccer. If I'm a goalkeeper, I know both of my goalkeepers graduate in the next two years. I'm already recruiting for three years in advance. The other benefit is obviously if you sign up and you get offered a place on our Premier Athlete Package, the earlier you sign, the more service you're going to get out of us. What determines how much you get? Again, hopefully we've highlighted today, there's various different factors. Some schools, it might be the international. Milo brought up a great point that actually his BTEC had great value for him. And I was in the same position where... I worked really hard to get an A at A level for business, but actually my distinctions that I got doing my BTEC as part of a scholarship had just as equal weight for that, and in fact definitely helped my resume. Um, SAT, how you get on with coaches, various different factors on that, and every school's different. Uh, what other costs can you expect? So we talked about entrance exams, so SAT around £100. You can take it multiple times, but... I wouldn't want to take it more than once, but I think, in fact, Milo was talking, I think his sister took it more than once um, in order to get a higher score because it can help with academic scholarship. Uh, eligibility centres, Milo brought up another great point in that he registered for both NAI and NCAA, I believe Megan was the same, just to keep your options open because at the point of us promoting you, you don't know which school you're going to go to. So if you can get cleared by both, then that just helps with the negotiations. Yeah, you look at it as a sunk cost because you might lose a hundred odd pounds if you don't go to one of them. But I, I would personally recommend it because it does keep your options open. Um, other costs, you might need to get your um, certificates evaluated by a third party, but that's a fraction of schools that need to. And obviously, a visa is going to be, you know, probably around four hundred pounds. But it's, you know, it is a bit of a joke how much they charge you, but you need it, and obviously, it covers you for while you're out there. Typically, five year visa. We talked quite extensively about being able to work out in America, which might be something that's quite new to those that are new to the process, thinking, I didn't realise I could work out in America, but also how important it can be to make sure that the whole process is financially feasible for you. So, didn't know that Milo was a groundsman. Megan, have you been working much while you've been out there? Yeah, um, I coach um, just privately and I also do event stuff. So I work all the games and really just get to sit and watch the games. Yeah, perfect. So I was very much the same. I used to do that. Also used to work in the gym. I did some student assistant stuff in my last three years to the point where actually in year four, I think I was earning $10,000 a year. And obviously my cost, was <laughs> so, um, that was really brilliant for me. But obviously you can't rely on that. For most individuals, it's probably two to $3,000 a year. Um, but as I said, for me, that was what made it able for me to come out completely debt free. Um, so what's next? Um, as I said, we are actively recruiting for 2021, 2022. We've even got a couple of athletes signed for 2023. Um, so, yeah, if you are interested and want to book a private chat with yourself and your parents, happy to do so. Um, complete the application on our website, ussportscholarships.com for free. We'll get back to you within a day to let you know your eligibility status. As I just touched on there, you can then arrange a free consultation with me or one of my colleagues. Once trial games are enabled to be held again, we'll be doing them pretty much monthly, hopefully for the rest of the year, as well as a showcase game in December. So no doubt if you've already applied, you will get circulated um, information of that and also do follow our social channels for the latest updates. Um, Exclusive to anyone who joins our seminars. So we've taken down the names of the people that joined us. You get an exclusive £100 off our Premier Athlete package if you're offered a placement on that. Um, and then you can see kind of the timeline from that. Once you've decided your package, immediately we can create your profile. You then, if you're looking to a four-year school, need to study for your entrance exam. Then if you get cleared by that, you also need to register for an eligibility centre at a four-year school. Get cleared by that. As I said earlier on, we then act as a sports agent for you to do negotiations. Once you're committed to the school, you get cleared by admissions, get your visa, fly out to the States. So hopefully um, you've had some great insight there in terms of how that process works. There are more ins and outs to that, but they're kind of the key milestones. Um, at that point, really want to thank everyone for joining.